In the year plus that I've been using an Aura Ring, it has served me several ways in my day-to-day -day life. But more than anything, it's a conversation starter. When people see this smart ring on my index finger, they want to know whether it's worth it and what the Aura Ring can do for me that my Apple Watch can't. Still, after using it for over a year now, I've learned there's plenty that I like and also don't like about the Aura Ring. But the real question is, how does it compare to the Apple Watch? Two of the main functions of the Apple Watch and the Aura Ring are sleep tracking and activity tracking. However, there are pros and cons to doing so with each. First off, I'm heading to Human Apex Performance to take some tests and get measurements to compare against data that my Apple Watch and Aura Ring also collect. Now, to be perfectly clear, this is not going to be a test of my fitness. Instead, I'm going to see how the Apple Watch and Aura Ring compare to the professional tools in a sports lab. Hey, I'm Kate. Nice to meet you. Okay, nice to meet you. So we're gonna do two tests. Start with the resting metabolic rate piece, and then we're gonna go to a VO2 max test after that. All right, ready to go? I sound like Squidward. I actually do have an Apple Watch, which I'm wearing now. I like to know my heart rate zones, kind of how much I push myself that day. The Aura Ring doesn't measure heart rate throughout the day. It only gives you a snapshot every 15 minutes or so. But I do sleep with the Aura Ring, and that helps me kind of dictate, you know, what time to go to bed, what time to wake up. I like kind of keeping track of my deep sleep and my REM sleep. Sleep is one of the most important things we have. If I had to pick between an Aura Ring and Apple Watch, personally, I would use the Aura Ring, but I do know both together is the complete matrix of health. So the number you see here, 20, 30 kilocalories per day, is basically how many calories her resting metabolic rate is. Meaning, if she laid down on this table doing absolutely nothing all day, that's how many calories she needs to just sustain life function. My throat's dry. <laughs> I'm so nervous. How long am I gonna be running for? We're trying to get you to maximal heart rate and also maximal oxygen uptake. And then once you finish the test, we're trying to see how your heart rate goes from high to low. While I'm running the test, you'll see the numbers on the machine, but I'm gonna be having my two iPhones here. One is hooked up to my Aura Ring, one is hooked up to my Apple Watch, and that way you'll be able to see my live workout heart rates on both. While the Apple Watch can give you your VO2 max, based on your activity throughout the day, it cannot give you a live VO2 max reading, so we're gonna take a look at that once my run is done. All right, so now if you're ready to get started, we're gonna get you hooked up to the mask, and then we can start going. No turning back now. <laughs> So we're starting at a light jog, 0% incline, and then at about two minutes in, we're gonna increase the grade about 2%, and then the speed about three to 5%. Keep going for as long as you can stay at the front of that treadmill. Good. Now you're gonna begin the heart rate recovery period, so you're just gonna breathe here. See how your heart rate goes naturally down. All right, congratulations. You can breathe now. <laughs> Oh nice. goodness. Nice job. That was harder than I was expecting. Yeah. As you can see the blue here is the heart rate and okay. it kind of jumped around a little bit. Once you put on the mask and it, it feels a little bit like breathing is harder and your heart rate usually jumps up a little bit I and then it kind of steadies out. I see a little yeah, yeah. up and down. Um, the so max is on both of these tests. It had about 174 for the Aura Ring and the Apple Watch. And then on our tests we had about 168 for your max heart rate. One thing to note is that these could overestimate the actual heart rate a little bit that it thinks you're working harder at the pace that you're going which means that this could underestimate your vo2 max okay so if i were an athlete i'd really want an accurate reading it's like yeah. what i need to be looking for when i'm training but if that's not me so do you think i'm still getting accurate enough of data from my wearables I'm impressed that the Aura Ring and the Apple Watch's data were so similar to what we actually got on the test. When I did research on how valid the Aura Ring and Apple Watch's VO2 max measurement was, um, it was definitely a little bit of a margin of error off from what our actual value was. So I was a little surprised to see that the heart rates were so accurate because then you could get the heart rate zones from that result. I was definitely prepared for the worst, so the test was not as bad as I was expecting, but that also could be the fact that I was interested to see 
how my fitness wearables would perform. You know, I'm not a runner, but I do track my physical activity with these devices, and it's important to know that I'm getting accurate data. Now, I can leave here with a bit of peace of mind, knowing that when it comes to heart rate, both my Aura Ring and my Apple Watch are giving me the measurements that I need to go about my day. You have no need to be skeptical about the data you're getting. So again, if that heart rate data is what's most important to you, you could just be using your Aura Ring to go about your workouts. But if you wanna get a closer look at those heart rate zones, that's when you might wanna look at an Apple Watch. Even in the controlled environment of the test, I still found myself glancing down at my Apple Watch. I still wanted to see my metrics, which is something that the Apple Watch can do during fitness tracking while the Aura Ring cannot. But I wouldn't count the Aura Ring out just yet. I'm gonna bring both my devices to a place where the Aura Ring really thrives. Sleep tracking is something that both the Apple Watch and Aura Ring can do. Each device tells you basic data, like how much time total you spent asleep and even how much time you spent in each sleep stage cycle. But in my experience, the Aura Ring does take things one step further. For starters, the Aura Ring actually gives you a sleep score. Now, your sleep score is a measure of your overall quality of sleep, but it pulls in some interesting data, such as how much time you spent in bed, your sleep efficiency. That way you can kind of quantify how well you're sleeping and that gives you an actual number that you can track over time. The Apple Watch doesn't have a sleep score, and I'm not saying that everything needs to be gamified, but it's a good way to track your trends over time if there is some actionable changes that you are making to your sleep. And for all the points of measurement that I mentioned, in the Aura app, there are information buttons pretty much everywhere, so you can read further about what that data actually means. The Apple Health Sleep section also has some literature, but it's not as thorough. And not only is the Aura app in general more thorough, but there's a lot of intuition built into the user experience. The best example of that is the bedtime window feature. Based on how well you slept the days before, your activity for the day, and kind of your general sleep trends, the Aura Ring will send me a notification to my phone that also shows up on my Apple Watch, telling me a couple hours before it thinks I should go to bed. And it makes that recommendation relative to how well I slept the days before, my activity for the day, how my sleep cycles have been generally, things like that. In comparison, Apple's sleep schedule feature is set by the user, so you get the reminder at the same time every day when it's time to wind down for bed with no concern for how you slept the days before. Do my heart rate, my HRV. So as expected, the Apple Watch and the Aura Ring both gave me my notifications to start getting ready for bed. So I actually acted on them and am winding down for the night. I had a really long day, so I know I'm hoping for a good night of sleep. Now, I don't know if you can tell by my choice of PJs, but being comfortable when I sleep is so important for me. So when I'm sleeping with wearables, that's something I have to consider. For the Apple Watch, I have to make sure I have the right band on. Some bands are just not comfortable to sleep with. I also need to make sure that it's in the sleep focus mode, otherwise the screen might go off and that's super disturbing in the night. Now, I don't have to worry about that with the Aura Ring super discreet, forget it's there. The only thing I will say is sometimes if I'm sleeping on my arm weird or my finger gets swollen overnight, it might get a little uncomfortable. But overall, I'd have to say the Aura Ring is the less invasive sleep tracker. There we go. That's my snooze going off again. Yeah, good morning. It was honestly a bit of a struggle to get up this morning. I am super interested to take a closer look at the sleep tracking data from my Apple Watch and my Aura Ring. But first, let me make sure the devices are charged, let me get ready for the day, and I'll catch up with you soon. So I've just had a look and the first thing that I can see is that the Apple Watch and Aura Ring have slightly different times for how much sleep I actually got. The Apple Watch says I got about nine hours and 15 minutes of sleep. The Aura Ring puts me closer to eight hours and 50 minutes. A 25 minute difference or so seems like it would make a difference to me, but I should say that there's no way to know which one was actually accurate. This isn't something that we tested in a sleep lab. It's just kind of my perception of my overall rest. To that point, both devices give me different estimates of how much time I spent in each sleep stage cycle. For example, the Apple Watch says I spent two hours and 45 minutes in REM sleep, while the Aura Ring says I spent just two hours and 15 minutes in REM sleep. But something that I see on both devices and is something that I look for when I test wearable devices is that they picked up that time in the middle of the night where I happen to wake up 
and I can see that just before 4 a.m. both devices detected that I was awake. Some other data that I can see from my sleep for both the Apple Watch and the Aura Ring are my average oxygen saturation and my heart rate overnight. Now, I actually don't care much day to day about what those numbers look like, but for times when I'm not really taking care of myself or I'm traveling or I feel like I could be getting sick, I actually do want to know that data. As of the Apple Watch Series 8, both devices have a skin temperature reader, but where the Aura Ring actually uses that data for actionable advice is the readiness score. According to the Aura Ring, my readiness score for today is an 81, which is good, not great. That could have to do with the fact I had a hard workout yesterday. I've been traveling quite a bit. So today I am gonna get some movement in, but I'm not gonna push myself too hard. For me personally, this readiness score means everything. I don't wanna get hurt. I don't wanna get sick. I wanna take care of myself so that I can be my best person every single day. And if I'm not sleeping right or recovering properly, I need to know these things. And I guess that's why I'm so surprised that the Apple Watch doesn't have a feature like this of its own. So when it comes to sleep tracking, I think the Aura Ring has more to offer than the Apple Watch. And if I could only choose one device to sleep with, it probably would be the Aura Ring. So in the end, I think that this test proved to be a bit more anecdotal than scientific. What I found, the Apple Watch is the better activity tracker. It's better in the moment, you can see your data on the screen. And that's before digging into all the other features available through the Apple Watch with connectivity to the iPhone, mobile payments, things like that. The Aura Ring, on the other hand, is the better sleep tracker because it has that recovery data. It's more discreet and comfortable to wear. Me, I like having both. I think I like to know both kinds of data. However, if you only could have one of these devices, consider activity tracking or sleep tracking, which is more important to you. Be sure to let me know in the comments which device you would pick. And if you're curious about whether the Apple Watch Ultra could replace your iPhone, check out the video up here. In the meantime, see what we're doing on social, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Tom's Guide. And as always, I'm at Kate Kozich. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.